Hey, welcome to this video. This video is going to be about doing the lab. I had some questions that came up about lab and needed to train a customer on doing the lab or creating an order. And when I looked at my video series, I was looking for the lab and I realized the video out there was seven years old. Whoa. So since there's been some changes look wise in the system, we're going to do this and we're going to keep this one really short like we keep all of our videos to the point and let's get you trained on how to create a lab order for patients. Now, there's a lot of background setup that has to go into lab orders and I'm going to I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I may make some subsequent videos. If you put a comment in the uh oh comment section below and let me know if you want to see more details about lab orders that will create those other videos. But for now, we're going to create an order for Tinkerbell. Okay, and I'm going to point out that there are some things that are going to need to be done in the background as far as like for the procedure orders, you got the providers and configuration. Those two things have to be done. Now, loading a compendium, that's only for a specific lab that's already hard coded in the system. You can't load a compendium for just any old lab out there. So get that out of your mind. Now, back to what we were doing. And yes, I'm talking fast, but I need to create a visit in order to attach this lab order too. So I'm gonna say this is an established patient and let's just say lab order. Oh, not lab order, but lab. Okay, can't get that B, can I? All right, and everything else we can leave default and go save. Now that we got our encounter in place, we're gonna go to, now yours may be in a different place. Oh, that's not what we need right now. Orders is where I have mine set for right now. And these can be set in the configuration when you're doing the forms. Okay, so you can change where it says, I put mine under orders just to make it easier to get to. Again, you can move these things around based on your preferences. So I'm gonna click order and then click procedure order. That's gonna bring me here. And now this is where you're gonna to need to fill this in. Unfortunately, yes, this has to be filled in every time. Can you default this stuff? Yes, you can. Uh, go in and make the changes that you need. We're gonna say that this is a self pay and we're going to say that it's that's about Misha and that it's pending and it was collected on today's date, which is February 5th, 2024. Can you believe it? Seven years ago, I was still doing this. Anyway, so if you're gonna put notes in the system for the lab order, it also depends on how the lab order is going out. These clinical history and the patient instructions are going to put those notes on the system to the lab company if you're printing a requisition that's gonna go out. So stuff here and more stuff here. Now, some lab require a diagnosis code. You're gonna put the primary diagnosis code here if you want to. Your system should default to nothing. Okay, so select your ICD-10 and then uh, we're going to, since this is a dermatology, we're gonna do this one. And I have no idea what that means, but just in the meantime, that's gonna set a diagnosis code. Here is where you're gonna to have to do more setup because this system does not come with anything in it. So I'm going to do, uh oh, that, you've gotta be kidding me. Oh, sorry, I need to use this one. And now I'm gonna do search, and now I'm gonna do, and do a search because I'm looking for biopsy. And so I'm gonna do this biopsy and I'm gonna stick an ICD-10 on that or a diagnosis code on that too. Again, some labs do not require this. In the meantime, I'm just gonna pick something generic to go with that. If I want to add another procedure, then I would do that as well. And if you notice, I had to pick a specific lab because when you put the procedure orders in, you put them in per lab. There, your procedure orders can be separated your procedure orders can be separated by the lab type that or the lab that you're using because not all labs process all procedure orders. Okay, that was a tidbit note. Let's see, what? Okay, now if I go ahead and type in biopsy again, well, biop, that should get me back to where I wanted to be. All right, so I'm gonna put my second code in here and I'm gonna choose another ICD-10 for that one. And again, I'm just randomly choosing stuff just to make the order. Now, when I go ahead and click save, if I save this, it's just gonna save it to the system. 
And for those that are not doing a bi-directional interface, save is probably what you're going to want to do. And you can go here and you'll see your order. If you click on edit, it'll take you back to the order screen. If you click on this number right here, when you click on that number, it's going to bring you into this. Now, some people use this as a requisition form. It really is not. Don't do that. Uh, but if it works for your lab company, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I, I do it on a score. That brings me back to that. Cancel. And then what I want to do now, as you can see, the orders here. And if you, when, if you are going to be getting results back into the system, again, that's more configuration that you're going to need to do. You're going to go here. And this is a side note. You're going to go here and you're going to go to electronic reports. And then you have to configure your system for SFTP or some type of way of getting the lab orders back into the system. But this is how you create a lab order. Man, I'm running really long. So I'm going to stop this video now. Hope this is helpful. Uh, you can see the new interface and it looks way better than it did seven years ago. And you compare the two and look like, wow, look how far OpenMR has come since then. Talk to you later. Bye.